everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are gonna over dye a variegated cotton yarn. Now, sometimes, now usually when I go about trying to dye yarn, I start with bare yarn that has usually been unbleached, undyed, and is a cream color. However, sometimes you can get a pastel or variegated yarn at a discounted price, and therefore, you can over dye something that maybe has some different coloration or maybe it's just a color that you don't like. And so I thought that it would be fun to just show this off with some cotton. Now, this is Knit Picks Dishy Yarn, which is 100% cotton and the colorway is Egg Hunt Multi. Now, I took this already and wound it into a circular skein. When I purchased the yarn, it was in a ball that was more like this. And you can turn it into a skein like this by winding it around the back of a chair. I happen to use my PVC pipe Nitty Naughty, um, but if you want to get more even color coverage or have more control over the color placement, it is good to rewind the skein. I have absolutely dyed commercially wound balls of yarn like the blue one in the center, but uh, in general, I recommend winding the yarn into a big circle so that way you can dye it. I want to over dye this with some Tulip One Step Tie Dye Powder. This is some powder that I first used for another project earlier in the day to do some light speckles, but since here we have this variegated yarn already with these beautiful Eastery pastel type colors, I thought that we can go bigger and see what kind of punch we can add to this. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. Since the One Step Tie Dye has everything we need in it to dye the yarn, I am going to pre-soak in plain tap water. Now you might notice here that I've got yarn for a few different videos. And this is because although you can use old mixed dissolved tulip tie dye, it is best to and most effective to use it as close to when you mix it as possible. So I wanna have plenty of yarn ready to go uh, to use up all of the dye that we are going to be playing with. Anyway, I am pressing on the fiber to try to squeeze out as much of the air as possible. And I'm gonna let this soak overnight. I am wearing safety glasses, my deluxe P100 respirator and gloves while we are playing with dry dye cotton. There is some dye on the counter. We have used tulip tie dye in teal, purple, and black. I did not put this yarn through my uh, spin dryer. Uh, and do I want to rub it on the counter? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't mind, certainly, if we get some color off the counter. I don't think I'm gonna completely yarn mop this, but I do wanna speckle heavily onto it. Okay, I wanted to mop. This is the cotton I tried to dye with Kool-Aid a long time ago. I'm just gonna go wet this so that way I can use this as a mop. In just wetting it, some more uh, Kool-Aid popped out, which is a shame. All right, let's start with the black. And we're gonna go in heavy-ish. Um, I'm dyeing it with the dry powder, but I'm not going for like ultra fine speckles here. It is a lot heavier. All of the tools and equipment I am going to be using are dedicated for dyeing yarn and are not used in the preparation of food. Now this black color does break. Uh, it's got like orange and yellow specks to it, which I totally forgot about. But given the colors we are starting with here, I think that it could be pretty cool. Now I'm curious, because I'm planning to steam set this, if colors will spread uh, in the same way that we've seen in the past that's given us something very like watercolor-esque. But I am attempting to go for fine speckles on some cotton with the same tulip tie dye, which is why you didn't see me open it. 
Uh, and so this is the teal. All these colors, I, well, I'm not sure how some of it will look on the yellow, but, uh, you know, we're going in a lot heavier, a lot heavier. And, haha, -ha, I am going to wipe my hands on this yarn mop, which is a, currently a beautiful mix of purple and teal from what's sticking. I wonder if the black could be bad. The dye's a little old. So one of the things we don't know is what exactly is in tulip tie-dye. Uh, we can assume that there is soda ash, uh, because usually that's something you need for cotton to bind. But, you know, we just, we don't know what is in it. And so that can make it hard to know. But I have been able, now that we're going for fine speckles here today, we're just over dyeing this in a fun way. Uh, but you can get really fine, sharp speckles using Ritz dye powder and Jacquard eye dye. And neither of those require the use of soda ash either. So I think that those might be like direct and or union dyes. I'm not quite sure what's in this tie-dye kit. Still on the list though, is to use fiber reactive dyes to speckle. That is something that I'd like to do at some point. But the thing with tie-dye is whenever I'm gonna play with the tie-dye powder, uh, because I don't really wanna store it, I typically try to come up with a few different projects that I can do at the same time. Now, I don't have a steamer basket set up yet for this particular yarn, but I have to say that this is really fun. There's probably gonna be a ton of washing, <laughs> which isn't a problem. Oh my, but you see how like, I wasn't even intending to, and we got some like speckles on there, so like, I always wipe down everything after using tie-dye. The powder is super, super fine. Okay. I'm pretty happy with the coverage uh, thus far. I'm trying to think. Uh, let's do some more purple. I think that this is just going to be like pretty wild uh, and fun. Now, if this were acid dyes, the colors would spread some. I'm expecting that we'll see a lot more spread on here. Um, and I'm very excited with this mop, which uh, we will be using in a number of videos. Okay, I need to go set up a steamer basket. All right, I'm over here with my eight quart multi-pot. And I am going to pick the yarn up, carefully place it in. All right, and before we go and check in on that, this is giving me anxiety. I would like to clean this up. <laughs> so I am picking this mop uh, and we are rubbing it on the counter to try to soak up. We're not gonna be able to soak up all of the dye. To some extent, we will be just spreading it around. But we can get a lot of this dye in this yarn, which we will continue to use as a yarn mop today as I am dyeing other fiber. But now I'm gonna get a paper towel and wipe down the surface and we'll cover those containers of the dry dye for a little bit. And we will steam this for at least 30 minutes, probably closer to 40. It has been 40 minutes. I'm gonna turn off the heat. And with our heavy-handed approach, I will say I do see some speckles in here. Uh, yeah, there's some, well, it's very steamy, but there are some discrete specks 
right there <laughs> as I'm trying to fan the steam away. There are some discrete specks. Uh, most of it did obviously spread out, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not thinking that this is a good candidate for my next Synthropole video. Now, I am going to set this aside to let it cool so we can wash it, but actually there is minimal, I'm not sure how well you can see because of the steam, Maybe there's a hint of color that went through, but minimal. So basically the color, some will obviously rinse out, but it wasn't dripping through, which I think is always worth noting. So anyway, I'm gonna remove this, set it aside to cool so we can wash it. Let's wash this yarn. I'm gonna pop it in to some water and thoroughly rinse out this pan where it was sitting. So far I'm not seeing a lot of bleeding, which <laughs> normally would not be a bad thing, but given that I'm trying this technique again because, well, I want to see if there's back staining. Okay, we are seeing bleeding. Um, that makes me feel a little better. Okay, that makes me feel better. <laughs> It's just like, wait, no bleeding. All right, we are gonna try this for ourselves here as well, even though this isn't a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm gonna add a little bit of Synthropole in here uh, right away. Because I think that this is the way I am gonna do it when we're trying to see if we get back staining or not. Um, And see, the problem is that like, I should let this soak in water. So I'm also afraid to let it soak in water. Because right now there's so much dye in there. Uh, so that is my conundrum for the moment. Um, but I am also curious if the sensor pull will mean we don't need to do as many rinses. Um, and whoa! Okay, is it just me or is this already like insanely better? I mean, there's definitely some uh, stuff coming out. Let's go ahead and just rinse off the bottle to add some, a little more simple pulls here in here, but we are totally now that's not very much. I am going to let this yarn in here uh, and soak for I don't know 15-ish minutes because if it does help pull out that extra sty, that's a good thing. So, yeah, let's let's wait. I had a timer going on the stove. I forgot to set a specific one for this, but hey, it was almost exactly 15 minutes when I came back to check, realizing I forgot to set another, another timer. So, I do think I am seeing evidence here of some back staining. Um, but that doesn't mean that, like, tie-dye is a whole different beast. Um, but let's see how much bleeding we see now after that soak. Because I am feeling really optimistic. Uh, but again, I will be filming, which may or may not have come out already, a side-by-side -side of Synthropole versus Dissoap washing tie-dye yarn. There's still some slight bleeding. Um, so I'm actually going to make the water warm, uh, not hot. Uh, and I will continue washing off camera and I'll check back in when I feel like we're done. Which actually, maybe will be now. <laughs> it's like, hold on a moment. I mean, that is looking clear to me. Uh, magic? 
So maybe it's just we had to rinse out the rest of that liquid. Because I'm feeling ready to go to my spin dryer. Oh! Let's go to the spin dryer or hang it up to dry and we'll come back for some conclusions. Woohoo! Is it funny that I cannot remember all the colors that were in this uh, variegated yarn before? I mean, clearly there was yellow and I think pink, but beyond that, I don't really remember. The yellow in here brings this finished yarn a very floral feel. We actually ended up with a lot of speckles in here, which is really surprising because when I tried to intentionally create speckles with Tulip One Step Tie-Dye, it didn't really turn out the way that I was aiming for. So this is still really, really fun and a big transformation from what we started out with. I absolutely could have covered up all of these colors more, but it was really fun to do something a little less expected and play with the powder directly. Now, I think that if I had used, say, uh, fiber, commercial fiber reactive dyes versus this retail tie-dye kit, we probably could have had more saturated colors on it. But everything just really, really works here, and I'm really happy with how the yarn turned out. As for our poor yarn mop that I used over the course of multiple videos, uh, I don't even remember which video I was intending to chat about this one in. But the Kool-Aid with the Synthropole did rinse out a lot more. The base color is more pastel pink than what I started with, which means, again, that you can't dye cotton yarn with Kool-Aid. But as for the rest of this, I'm planning on having this remain a cotton yarn mop and I will, uh, it will make another appearance in another video when I over dye it some more. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I, ho I hope that it serves as a helpful reminder that you are not limited to bare yarn when it comes to playing with color and playing with dyeing yarn. Starting with a clearance colorway is a great way to play and experiment. It does help if that colorway happens to be on the more pastel side. You can't really take black yarn and then over dye it in a way that might show up, but with pastels or even sometimes medium tones, you can over dye it to take something that maybe you're not excited about and turn it into something that you are really excited about. And it happens that if you don't love your final color, you can always dye it again. You can always add more color to it. So if I wasn't a fan of this, I could try to over dye it with black and see where we ended up. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And while you're at it, smash that bell <laughs> to make sure that your notifications are on and you never miss a new video. I love to explore different types of dye from things that you can find in your big box craft store to dyes that you might need to order um, from a specific company. And I think that there is space for everyone to play with dyeing yarn. Whether you want to stick with food coloring and wool yarn, don't forget food coloring won't work on cotton, um, or if you want to dye plant-based fibers. There's a lot that you can do and so many different ways that you can play. I do have a whole playlist on different ways that I have dyed cotton yarns and I've played with a lot of different dyes that you can find at say a Michael's or a Joann's uh, and so which I think it makes it a really easy way for someone to find and play with color. Thank you so much for watching!